Good morning, students. The present session of environmental law. Uh, in this, we are going to revise the concept of rule of law. As we have already, uh, you know, a lot many times discussed this topic in the class, revised it also. But today we will try to summarize, do the revision in a summarized manner uh, for the recapitulation purpose. So uh, the whole concept, as we have already discussed, rule of rule of law is considered as the antithesis of the term rule of man, and uh, it, it lay, you know, based on the maxim that uh, when there is a, where there is a right, there is a remedy. So it's a maxim of rule of law and the words like with the words of rule of law we have derived it from the french words and uh, it means the principle of legality and it refers to the you know the government which is based on law and not on men and uh, how we have discussed that uh, it's an you know ideal and modern name of natural law and uh, when we talk about the basis of administrative law it's the doctrine of rule of law and when we trace the its, its origin we find that we have discussed that sir edward coke is considered as the person uh, you know who's considered as the originator of this principle uh, he was chief justice in king james one reign and uh, further we have discussed that how uh, what were his views uh, regarding the whole concept of rule of law like uh, how it originated with the object to exclude uh, arbitrary authority of the government or king and to protect the individual from unlawful actions of the government and uh, later we have seen that we have discussed that the concept of rule of law how well it was being uh, developed and established by uh, Albert Wayne Dicey. Now when we uh, Remember Dicey, we know that uh, he was considered as, uh, you know, uh, one of the eminent, uh, he's considered as one of the eminent British jurists in co of unconstitutional law and uh, theorist. Uh, so he highlighted the uh, importance of rule of law and uh, we have discussed that uh, what were the perspective of Dicey, how he concept, you know, what was his conception of uh, uh, rule of law. And uh, when we summarized all of it, we can attribute uh, dicey uh, perspective in and uh, you know in the following manner and the three meanings that he tried giving uh, you know uh, to the concept of rule of law so first is supremacy of law then equality before law and predominance of uh, the legal spirit so when we say supremacy of law as we have already discussed it uh, when we try and explain his first principle that it simply meant that uh, rule of law means absolutely supremacy of predominance of uh, regular law as opposed to you know anyone influence or arbitrary power or by discretionary power and he uh, simply excludes uh, the existence of any arbitrariness or uh, you know prerogative or even discretionary power of any authority you know even on the part of the government and when we talk about uh, the second principle uh, that is uh, equality before law where uh, we have uh, discussed that how he on what basis he criticized the french legal system of droid administrative and uh, where uh, you know uh, which there in which there was separate uh, administrative tribunals for deciding cases between official state uh, officials of the state and citizens and uh, you know according to him how exemption of civil servants from the jurisdiction of ordinary courts of law and providing them with special tribunals uh, was considered as negation of equality so basically his principle of equality before law um, uh, was uh, you know can be explained uh, as a uh, how he believed that no matter how ever high you may be or at what place you are at law is always going to be above you and uh, all the everybody is equal before the law and uh, according to Dicey, as we have discussed, there that there must be equality before law or equal subjection of law of all classes to the ordinary law of the land administered by the ordinary courts. And uh, he also 
uh, you know, meant uh, that the law should not discriminate between the people on the basis of any any condition uh, or any criteria, be it gender, religion, or their background, anything. And it should apply equally to ordinary citizens and to government officials. The third principle, if we summarize it, uh, which talks about the predominance of legal spirit. So, uh, Dicey, in simpler, you know, language, uh, he asserted that uh, the right of personal, you know, rights of the people, like their personal liberty, freedom from arrest, and are uh, the result of judicial, dis you know, decision that he has given a, a absolute, uh, you know, importance to uh, the judgments, the judiciary. And uh, how we have seen that uh, all of the rights of the people are a result of judicial decision. And in particular cases, we have actually, uh, you know, uh, which has which have actually arisen between the parties. The constitution is not the source, that is what he believed, but the consequences of the rights of the individual. And uh, thus, Dicey, I, I he emphasizes on the roles of the government, uh, um, role of the courts uh, as guarantor of liberty and suggests that uh, it would be secured more adequately if there were you know, if they were enforceable uh, through the courts of law and then by mere declaration uh, of those rights in the document. And uh, as because if it has been just declared in the document, it can be ignored and, you know, curtailed uh, very easily. We have seen that on, uh, you know, various points on various bases, the Dicey's concept of rule of law got this, uh, you know, uh, criticized. We have discussed the same in the classes also. Like, um, he has uh, given unchallenged power to courts and he emphasized too much on the power of the courts being the guarantor of liberty and suggested that, you know, it would be secured, uh, the rights of the people would be secured more adequately if it is enforceable through court of law and not not just mere being declared by any document or and uh, then we have also discussed that uh, how his concept basically de deals with the rights of the individual and not uh, with the you know administrative power and how he dislikes uh, discretionary power he propounded that uh, individual liberty and criticized uh, administrative discretion but he fails to you know fail to distinguish between the discretion given to public official by a statute and the arbitrary discretion uh, claimed uh, by the king and then we have also uh, you know discussed that how and I see wrote his whole the you know whole concept uh, uh, during the time of this fair and he dealt with the rights of the individual not the power of the administrators and uh, he how he ignored the privileges and immunities which is enjoyed by the crown under the cover of constitutional maxims and how king can do no wrong the whole maxim here and ignored many statutes which conferred discretionary power on the executive and how we cannot uh, you know um, uh, under the ordinary law you could not call into question or test uh, test them under ordinary courts and when we talk about uh, that uh, Dicey has given no reference to, uh, you know, prerogative writs, so when we talk about administrative law, whether it existed in England when Dicey's book was published in 1885, in his book, law, you know, Law of the Constitution, uh, Dicey did not refer uh, anything to the prerogative writs of mandamus prohibition, surgery, by which superior courts exercised control over administrative actions and their adjudication and these writs belong to public law and have uh, basically nothing to do with private law and he has if he has noticed those had uh, you know writs he could not have denied the existence of administrative law in England and how we have uh, discussed that uh, Dicey created a false opposition between basically between ordinary law and special law and between uh, ordinary courts and special tribunals when uh, he says that uh, he himself you know laid, uh, recognized that it may be necessary to create a body of person for adjudicating upon offenses or errors which are being ordered you know wrongdoing that is being committed by the civil servants and as such education may be more effective 
in enforcing official law and uh, you know moreover the presence uh, uh, mayor pre them having mayor presence of a well established law and uh, it uh, you know and for all it would not serve any purpose and then we have seen that when the ic said that the wide discretionary authority was inconsistent uh, with the rule of law he just probably was expressing his political philosophy he did not express a principle of english constitution for that in fact where you know wide discretionary power already existed in england so when you go through dicey's uh, a concept you find that uh, it is filled with advantages and uh, uh, often got criticized also when we see uh, at its application the application of the concept of rule of law uh, we have dealt with how the rule of law is uh, now being applied in modern era is seen in you know in um, how it acts like in what manner it acts like in uh, modern era how its application happened in india what is the perspective and we have seen it through uh, various judicial interpretation through indian laws uh, through indian uh, cases also and we have seen how it accelerated the whole scope of judicial activism uh, and uh, its relationship with administrative law how it changed over a period of time because administrative law was very unpopular as we have discussed in the you know in the vocabulary of traditional common lawyers and uh, this this had uh, you know had been due to the misconception about its role and purpose that was being created by through the writings of the most uh, eminent constitutional lawyers like professor ev dicey also but we see and we have discussed it also that when when we see a uh, rule of law particularly in india we have seen that the uh, the whole concept of uh, administrative law the basis of administrative law is the doctrine of rule of law and when you could talk about the you know uh, its application we see that in indian constitution uh, it provides that the state shall not deny to any person equality before law equal protection of law hence the conception of rule of law would lose are uh, going to lose its whole vitality if the instrumentalities of the state are not charged with the duties of discharging their functions in a fair and just manner and uh, the constitution uh, you know uh, lays a great uh, responsibility on the on the state and it uh, a growing threat to the uh, rule of law uh, would be you know coming uh, with the undue delay in judicial proceedings and in order to ensure and we have discussed that uh, in order to ensure the rule of law the system must therefore be uh, you know uh, must act in a more effective and expeditious uh, remedy should be provided against the violation of law if at all there is happening and uh, this means that the decision should be made by the application of well known principles and rules and in general such decision should be predictable and citizen should know where he stands and uh, you know in a, in a system governed by rule of law discretion when conferred upon executive authority must be confined within the clearly defined limits we have discussed all this uh, all these concepts and details in classes and when we talk about rule of law in indian constitution we have seen through various case laws also like how our what is the uh, you know perspective of the judiciary in the judiciary and uh, in india the constitution as it's considered as supreme the preamble of the constitution clearly set out the principle of rule of law and it sometimes they said that the planning and wel welfare schemes essentially strike at rule of law because they affect the individual freedom and liberty in you know many ways and but the concept of rule of law it keeps on playing an effective role by emphasizing upon play fair play uh, uh, justness and great accountability of the you know greater accountability of the administrators it keeps on laying greater emphasis on the principles of natural justice and rule of speaking order in an administrative process in order to eliminate all kinds of arbitrary uh, you know arbitrative arbitrariness uh, administrative arbitrariness and uh, we have seen it through you know various cases also and uh, when we uh, summarize this whole concept we will uh, we can say that the modern concept of rule of law is fairly wide and it uh, uh, therefore sets up an idea for the government to achieve a government which has to act in a fairer manner has to uphold the equality has to ensure that the function of law 
the function of rule of law you know uh, implies the function of government in a free society should be so exercised as to create conditions in which dignity of a man and uh, individual is uh, can be upheld